Hey, hello, it's Mike Moore. Uh, it's been a little while. It's always been a little while. I mean, honestly, I don't I don't make videos super often, but uh, I got, got some progress videos coming for you soon, but I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. But for now, um, make it a flamethrower for the mech that I modeled a little while ago. It's the first video in the Blender Speed Models playlist. So if you want to see the actual mech, go ahead and check that out. But for now, uh, I've got some sketches here that I drew in Mischief. This is the, the base kind of like what I want the flamethrower to look like. Uh, this is a little, don't, don't worry about this, never happened, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. Uh, and this is a tank that's gonna go on the, the end here. So just wanted to show you that. I, I usually like skip over the fact that I've got reference images in the background. So, so now I've got these and you can see that I've got these just as empties in the background and I drew those and uh, we'll, we'll skip right into the modeling, so let's go. So right off the bat, you can see me starting off with a cylinder and stretching it out to about the length I want the barrel to be and then kind of giving it a basic shape. The easiest thing to do with this kind of thing with weapons and the like is just make a basic shape and then fit it to the right size. And then after that, I grab the arm from the chain gun. Actually, I'll switch into a, another clip here really quick. So this is the chain gun for the super mech. Now, I haven't shown you guys a lot of the weapons that I've got going on right now. But at the uh, at the end of the video, I'll explain what I'm gonna do with like progress videos and like dev logs, I guess. Dev dev vlogs, dev logs, whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, the the arms on the chain gun are what I used to attach the flamethrower to the mech because they're arms, and that's probably what I'm gonna use for most of them. Maybe if there's like a weapon, like a missile launcher or something that has a totally different form factor, I'll make new arms. But but for now, this is just the easiest way to attach it to the super mech. So so this is what you've got. And uh, that's just so you so you know what's going on. These these got attached to the the flamethrower, and this 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 part this part never happened. Just the arms. So that's the gist of that. I just wanted to grab the chain gun arm for scale. Then I continue on with stretching out the barrel. And uh, this part here is the part I want to be perforated. You might have saw in the reference image. There's a lot of ways to make holes in things, and. Uh, Barely any of them give the object good topography, so I spent a really long time, longer than I did on most of the rest of the weapon on this part in particular, because I just wanted to get the holes looking nice. And if you have bad topography, like you see here, you see with like the, the angled lines, they're all triangles and they're not four-sided faces. If you smooth that, like smooth the faces so they try to um, make the whole shape look smooth instead of just the flat low poly lines, you see here, it looks really crappy and it has a bunch of like weird artifacts on it where the shading just isn't right. So what I ended up doing is chopping it up and setting it to an array so I could make it like only those two chunks, the two angled flat chunks are real and the rest of it is just an array that's set up to copy those parts and move them along the rest of the barrel so I can adjust the length of it at will which is really nice. And then what I'm doing here is chopping it into nice four-sided shapes that uh, make the shape look a lot nicer and smoother. And that way I can, again, just, I'll probably end up using this if I make other flamethrowers, which I plan, plan on doing, uh, like a handheld flamethrower, like a rifle, instead of ones that are attached to the super mech. And I'll, I'll just grab this and then use it in other things because the topography turned out really nice on this one. And, uh... This part, oh, it's it's just so time consuming. I've done it four or five times, but this one's probably the one that turned out the best. So yeah, really nice. Uh, just finishing up. I'm using the knife tool here to cut up everything and I'm attaching it to the other vertexes. And uh, I tried to make it have smoother edges, but it just didn't turn out that nice. So I just, I just went with the default uh, eight sides and it looks pretty all right, this is it. And then I used a, an edge split modifier to make it so the, the parts in the middle of the holes, the uh, the parts that join the inside and the outside of the mesh aren't connected to the rest, so the, the shading doesn't try to go into it. And you see here, I'm shortening the barrel a lot. I originally wanted to have a really long barrel and that's what it was in my sketch. This is about where I decide that I don't want the barrel to be long, I want it to be short. There is a dick joke to be had there, and I'm not nearly clever enough to come up with it. So you you go ahead and be imaginative with that one. Here I'm making the tank that is supposed to hold all the, the fuel for the flamethrower. 
and I, I switched into a different scene. So this is still the same Blender object. So it, it's just it, it's like um, it's like layers on an art program where one layer has all of one thing, and then another layer has all of another thing. So I can copy and paste things from one layer to another one, but I don't have to fight with the first layer when I'm making something for the second layer. So I could have a whole bunch of different objects. I like the little fire I made for the tank because the I, I didn't want to use any textures, but I really wanted to have it have a little fire icon on the tank to show that that's what it was. I mean, it's pretty it's a fucking flamethrower. I mean, it's obvious, but you know, uh, it's it's nice. I like the little low poly fire. Probably end up using that for something else. Something else maybe eventually. Now this recording is about eight minutes long, and I originally sped it up to about fifteen hundred percent, which had it at around six and a half minutes. But shit went way too fast, and it I couldn't say what I wanted to say about things, and I ended up slowing it down to about 1200% instead of 1500%, which got it up to about 8 minutes, and uh, that means the total recording length is about, uh, I'd, I'd say 3 hours? 2, two hours, it's 2 hours, but um, I think the total modeling time is around 3 hours. Hey. How you doing? It's getting a little quiet in here. That's kind of weird, huh? Hmm. Here I'm making tubes for the flamer because I mean it's it's a flamethrower. You gotta have you gotta have tubes if you're gonna make a flamethrower because you gotta it it just looks cool. I mean like in the future you would probably have the liquids and the fluids and the the gases that are coming from the big tank thing at the back. They would probably go inside the flamethrower because that's safer. But you know what? Tubes look cool, so fuck, fuck safety. It's a flamethrower. Who uses a flamethrower and worries about fucking safety? I'm a robot, damn it. I really like the uh, the path paths that you can use in Blender too, and I, I cut them down to about four sides because when you have something that's long like that and you cut it down to four sides and set it to smooth shading, you can't even tell that it's four-sided shape, that it's like technically a square because the smoothing works so well in game engines. And uh, that's actually, I learned that dirty fucking trick from Bethesda because they do that for the laser rifle. All the tubes on the outside of the laser rifle, they're just squares. But since they're shaded so well, you can't tell. And uh, that makes everything perform better. Circles, you, if you want a circle to look good, it's like really high poly. And that, that can be fairly impacting on performance. But if you just make it four, it looks nice because you're not like staring right at it all the time. So at this point I'm done with the tubes, and on my reference drawing that I made, I, I didn't really have any plans here, I just kind of put some scribbles in and figured I'd be like, hmm, something goes here eventually, and now I'm at the eventually point, so I'm just kind of like putting squares in and figuring out what's going on. Um, and the, the tubes need to attach to something, so here we are, I guess. Uh, at this, I don't know if you saw, but I did some fuckery with textures there. Uh, not really textures, but materials, and I made everything have sort of a tune shader, and it gave it a really strong TF2 vibe. But uh, this is something that I've recently fallen in love with in Blender called Blender Render. It's, it's the Blender internal render engine instead of Cycles, which is the one you always see renders of Blender using, because Cycles is a lot more realistic, but the internal render engine has a lot of cool tune and simplistic, like, low-poly render options, and it really makes it look nice. And I, you've seen pictures of Super Mac, the game I'm working on before, and they all use that kind of cel-shaded tune shader look. And this Blender render just has it. It just it's just a toggle that you can turn on. It looks super nice. Like look at this. Look at all the the this nice shading on the the gray and the red. It just looks so nice. But yeah, it, it totally does look super TF2 y. Which is which is fine. I mean like it's not like TF2 has trademarked that. And um I, I really like the way it looks. So yeah, Valve, you know what you're doing. You know how to make things look nice. You can see here I'm just I textured the arm a little bit because I didn't want it to be all black, but um, the, the arm was already textured. I just didn't feel like importing the textures into uh, internal render engine instead of cycles because uh, that can that takes time and I'm lazy. So we just we just did that for the preview. Looks nice. Uh, the nice yellow tubes are really cool. I really like the way they look. And that's a uh, 
that's about all we've got for the flamer. It, I'll, I'll throw up a render here going around in circles so you can get a look at the finished product. And uh, I'm not going to show it to you in-game yet because I'm going to do a little bit of a progress video, like a progress vlog at the uh, in the next couple days that shows you basically where I'm at with the game right now because I haven't really done one of those yet. And um, it, I kind of want to be able to show you like milestones that I've gotten gotten across. Uh, I'm probably going to be changing up the materials so it looks more like this Blender internal render than... Uh, than the Unreal Engine one because it's got some wonky shit with emissive textures. Don't worry about it. It's not. It's don't. Don't worry. It's fine. Um, but when I change that, I want you to be able to see the difference between what I had in one video and what I have in the second video because I think like seeing progress like that is really cool. Uh, that's about all I have to show you for the flamethrower. Uh, I'll be back to you again soon with a progress vlog on the Super Mech game, but uh, hope you enjoyed watching me blaze through this, and I'll be seeing you again soon. Later days.